Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. My name is Brian, and we talk about Blu-rays here. And I'm going to try and make this fast. We'll see if I can actually do it. Um, today starts a new Kino Lorber sale. It's called the June Swoon Sale. And it runs through, I believe, July 14th. Uh, and there's a ton of great titles. I just went through some stuff I have and grabbed, I don't know, 15, 20. But I'm going to try and be quick about these. It's more just to kind of let you know, like, hey, these are on sale. A lot of them are, I think, price pointed around 10 bucks. Uh, some will be a little bit more. Some will be a little bit less. But it's a pretty good deal if these are some titles you don't have. Um, so let's get into it. I'm basically going to go alphabetically. So uh, Amazon Women on the Moon, part of the sale. Uh, a whole bunch of great directors. Joe Dante, Carl Gottlieb. Um, let's see here. John Landis, Peter Horton. Uh, great, you know, sketch comedy, um, kind of like Kentucky Fried Movie kind of thing. And one of the best of its kind, which has a great running uh, TV show movie called Amazon Women on the Moon and we're just kind of seeing commercials and other things and uh, the Henry Silva bit in this which I'm not going to say on this video is wonderful uh, so a must and has a commentary with Cat Allinger and Mike McPadden true story of Amazon Women on the Moon with Landis Dante Marshall Harvey the editor casting director and Belinda Belaski and newly discovered outtakes and dailies from Joe Dante's personal archive. So definitely pick up Amazon Women on the Moon. Next up we have The Beguiled, Don Siegel's film, The Beguiled. Uh, this is one of my favorite collaborations he had with Clint Eastwood. has to do with a Civil War era soldier um, who is... Um, let's see here. He is... A Union soldier, soldier wounded in the South and is sheltered by the headmistress and students of a girls' academy in the South. And it becomes this very dark psychological drama. And I'm not going to go too much further. It was remade, obviously, uh, recently. I didn't get a chance to see the remake yet, but um, this one is quite memorable and quite dark. Again, one of the darkest things that Eastwood probably ever did. And one of the darker things that um, Don Siegel did, and he did some dark stuff. Uh, this has an audio commentary with uh, Cat Ellinger and some other stuff, so that's a must. Uh, Blue Collar is next, and that is a Paul Schrader movie, and it is about auto workers in Detroit, and the auto workers in question are Richard Pryor, Harvey Keitel, and Yafet Kodo. And it's just the story of how this um, this car manufacturing plant and its union reps sort of turn the employees against each other. And it's great. It's like legit, maybe my favorite Paul Schrader movie. And it ports over the audio commentary with Schrader and journalist Maitland McDonough. Which is great. But yeah, really great performances from Richard Pryor, Keitel, and Kodo, um, who almost <laughs> walked off the set. Um, anyway, that, that sort of is dealt with in the commentary. But it was a slightly troubled production, but turned out good. So really good movie, a must. Uh, Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia, um, one of my favorite Sam Peckinpah films with the great, uh, of course, Warren Oates. And, uh, you know, I, I just, a, just a really solid, once maligned, but now I think appreciated Peck and Paw film. Uh, definitely worth grabbing. I'm trying to move quicker here. Cool as Ice. <laughs> uh, a movie I find to be remarkably entertaining and really unique. There aren't too many movies like this, you know, where you have a pop star at the height of his powers who they the studio wants to make a vehicle for and you know basically makes a ridiculous movie that doesn't really make sense and he says some crazy stuff in the context of the movie and it is quite uh entertaining and funny to watch um also has a commentary from film historians alexandra heller nicholas and josh nelson very good track 
Uh, next up, Chicken Chronicles. This one is a sex comedy from 1977 starring Steve Gutenberg. And I only discovered this relatively recently. Uh, it was programmed at the New Beverly uh, a few years back before it was really available. And when this Blu-ray came out, uh, it was fun to finally get to see it. And it is raunchy and silly. But uh, if you like sex comedies of the 80s, like this is sort of a predecessor to that. And I think a lot of fun. It has Phil Silvers and Ed Lauder and others. Um, the Day the Earth Caught Fire. This is a British uh, Val Gast film. Uh, and it is from the director of The Quatermass Experiment, Quatermass 2, and The Abominable Snowman. Um, it's a doomsday movie. And it says, When the United States and the Soviet Union simultaneously set off nuclear explosions, London's Daily Express begins to report a bizarre weather changes around the world but when reporters dig deeper they discover the blasts have knocked earth off its axis and sent it hurtling towards the sun so it's kind of an early disaster movie kind of thing and pretty cool stuff uh from 1961 has the val Gass commentary from the previous dvd release and a new commentary from hill historian richard harlan smith so that is solid um and then one of my favorite sort of documentary discoveries of the past I don't know, five, ten years, is this uh, shot on video discovery, uh, Harvard Beats Yale 2929 from Kevin Rafferty, who did the movie, um, the documentary, uh, Atomic Cafe, which is also on sale, by the way. I couldn't find my Blu-ray of it, but if you want a nice documentary about uh, n nuclear bombs and, and stuff, uh, that's a really um, powerful one. Uh, but so this is a really cool shot on video documentary. It notably features Tommy Lee Jones as part of the, I think he was on the Harvard team, but basically it's the kind of thing where Harvard was, I think, supposed to beat, or wait, Yale was supposed to beat Harvard, if I recall. Um, and, and, uh, and basically it just it turns out to be this wild ending to this game and you get a bunch of players from both sides sort of telling the tale as it were uh and you know sort of recounting what happened and their perceptions of what happened and it's just a great story there's just a great setup uh and it's i just really dug this a lot um anyway uh i think i saw tom hanks recommend this on a podcast or a I don't know, an interview somewhere, and that's where I finally tracked it down. But I think this was on Canopy or Hoopla, so look for it there if you want. Um, this one from the great John Borman, Hell in the Pacific. Uh, this is a, I want to say World War II. Um, yeah, World War II, almost silent film, because basically you have these two soldiers. Um, so it says... Um, Two wartime enemies trapped alone on a desert island. Screen legends Lee Marvin and Tashiro Mifune deliver striking and well-etched performances in this searing psychological drama that packs plenty of action and excitement from uh, the instant they meet. Um, uh, a marooned American soldier and his Japanese counterpart have the same objective, to kill each other. But it soon becomes apparent that the only way they will survive is by forgiving and forging an uneasy truce and cooperating. Very interesting to see how this one plays out. Two, three, five to one. Uh, has a uh, on-camera interview with Borman and an audio commentary with film historians Travis Crawford and my friend Bill Ackerman. Good stuff. Um, some TV movies. I'm going to definitely highlight some TV movies in this pile. Killdozer, the story of the haunted bulldozer, uh, starring the great Clint Walker and also Neville Brand. Uh, if you know this one, you know it, and you know if you need it or not. Uh, this has an audio commentary with film historian Lee Gambin and film critic Jared Gahan, and uh, audio interview with director Jerry London. Um, but yeah, you know, Haunted Bulldozer. Is that your thing? If it is, pick it up. Uh, one of the Animal Attacks movies in the stack here. This is Link, uh, directed by the great Richard Franklin, who of course did Psycho 2, Cloak and Dagger, FX... Two and yeah, he didn't do FX one. Um, just a Hitchcock devotee and oh, Road Games, that's the big one. And uh, he's great. I love Richard Franklin. And yeah, this is the story of um, Elizabeth Shue is a 
becomes the assistant to a professor, kind of a weirdo professor who has an orangutan and a chimp in his house and something goes wrong and the orangutan starts to go a little crazy and uh, Elizabeth Shue is stuck to deal with it. Um, this has a commentary by film historian Lee Gambin and film critic Jared Gahan, deleted work print scenes, audio comment interview with Richard Franklin, Jerry Goldsmith demo, the link theme, good stuff. Uh, this is a really nice looking set, the collected films of Morris Engel and Ruth Orkin. I know them from The Little Fugitive, but this one also includes um, some of their other films, Lovers and Lollipops, Weddings and Babies, and I Need a Ride to California. Uh, Little Fugitive is, like these other films, a very lower budget, um, you know, almost docudrama. You know, it's about a little kid who gets lost on Coney Island and has to find his way back. And I've heard that these other films are great. And this set, this is not a $9.99 one, but uh, on sale for cheap and has a lot of great features, as you can see there. And uh, a really nice set, like a Criterion type thing, you know. Next up, we have The Laughing Policeman. This one directed by Stuart Rosenberg, who did Cool Hand Luke. Uh, it is highlighted by performances from Walter Matthau and Bruce Dern. It is a San Francisco cop movie. It is a bleak cop movie. It starts with a shooting, a massive shooting on a bus. And the cops, Dern and Matthau, are trying to solve this crime and catch this killer before he kills more people. And this one's underrated. I think, you know, if you like Dirty Harry, this is uh, like a slightly more bleak and downbeat um, kind of 70s movie. But I really dig this one a lot. And audio commentary by Lee Pfeiffer, publisher of Cinema Retro Magazine and film historians Eddie Friedfeld and Paul Scrabo. And there's an interview with actor Paul Koslow, who's also in this with Anthony Zerby and Lou Gossett Jr., um, there's definitely a bunch of others in this cast that you'll recognize, but good 70s cop movie. Uh, Mad Max in 4K is part of the sale. I'm not going to say too much about this. You know this movie likely, and um, this 4K looks really good. So if you don't have it, uh, definitely want to pick it up. This is the Blu-ray and the 4K together, and you get uh, a bunch of features, some new stuff. I want to say there's a new interview maybe. Road Rage, uh, Rage, a new interview with director George Miller. So that's a fun one. And the rest is stuff you may have had on other releases, but definitely want the Mad Max 4K. Grab it. Manhattan Project, one of my 80s favorites. Actually, we're going to hit a few of my 80s faves in this stack. Uh, this one about a kid who um, ends up stealing some plutonium and building a bomb. And it's kind of freaky but really interesting um, and memorable uh, the kid is played by Christopher Collett who had a brief uh, you know hot run in the mid 80s mid to late 80s he also did a really interesting movie called first born um, where Peter Weller plays like an evil stepdad type you know guy dating his mom and it gets pretty dark that one um, but this one's pretty dark too um, in this case his stepdad character you know, mom dating figure is um john lithgow and he works at this plant that secretly is you know developing nuclear stuff and the kid steals it more as a statement to out this facility i think if i recall uh cynthia cynthia nixon is in it as the um romantic interest and it's directed by marshall brickman um next one of my all-time faves miracle mile uh, um, a pre-apocalyptic drama set in Los Angeles. A, um, I want to say he's a trumpet player, but maybe he's a trombone player now that I think about it. Um, he, that is Anthony Edwards, uh, meets this woman that he uh, totally digs at a diner. Um, and then he sets a date. They have a great daytime date. They meet at the La Brea Tar Pits. And they um, set a date to, to meet after her shift is over at Johnny's, which is a great um, landmark diner in Los Angeles, no longer open. Um, but my wife and I actually looked into trying to get married there. This is one of the first movies she and I saw together. Um, but just a great story. Once uh, there's a phone call that sort of sets things in motion and then everybody panics and is trying to get out of Los Angeles. And it's pretty crazy. 
Um, but a really solid movie from Steve DeJarnot. And there's a commentary with him moderated by Walter Chaw and actually multiple commentaries. There's actually a ton of great stuff on this disc for you to check out. And um, so this is a must. I'm a huge, huge fan of this movie. Another Lee Marvin, a Western directed by uh, famous DP William A. Fraker. Um, this one starring Lee Marvin and Jack Palance and John Moreau. Uh, gripping saga that covers the tumultuous final days of the Old West, facing a changing landscape where barbed wire and railways replace the freedom of the open range. Monty Walsh, Marvin, and his fellow cowboys consider new work opportunities, toy with the idea of settling down, and draw their pistols for one last showdown. Really enjoyable and underseen. Another 80s movie that I like, uh, Moving Violations, uh, a movie that came out uh, in the wake of the Police Academy films and is kind of like a Police Academy movie meets a driving instruction, driver school movie. And we have a bunch of disparate characters that we see at the beginning of the film get into all kinds of automotive trouble. Uh, including um, Jennifer Tilly, James... Well, James Keach is one of the cops. Wendy Jo Sperber, Sally Kellerman. Uh, I want to say she has to do with the cops, too. Um, but there's a lot of really interesting... Brian Backer from Fast Times at Ridgemont High is in this. Uh, and then, of course, John Murray, brother of Bill Murray, who I thought was hilarious when I first saw this movie. Maybe your mileage may vary as he sort of mumbles his way through this movie, but I think he's still pretty funny. Um, and just the... the goofball of the movie but yeah so all these people end up in having to go to driving traffic school and it is a raunchy comedy it's silly and it's fun and this has an audio commentary with writer director neil israel uh one of my all-time favorite movies period is my bodyguard directed by tony bill from 1980 starring of course chris makepeace adam baldwin uh a young matt dillon uh coming off of over the Edge. Uh, I don't think he had made text in between. I can't remember. Uh, also, Ruth Gordon and Martin Mull. Uh, Chris Makepeace plays a, a high school kid who moves to a new school in Chicago. His dad is a hotel manager who lives in the hotel with his dad and his grandmother, played by Ruth Gordon. And he makes a bad impression on the first day of school with the local bully, played by... Uh, by Matt Dillon in one of his great performances as Melvin Moody. And then uh, he sort of enlists the help of Adam Baldwin, who's a very troubled kid in the class, to assist him with his bully problems. But such a great movie. And this has an audio commentary with director Tony Bill and film programmer Jim Healy. Uh, another TV movie, one of the greats, uh, The Night Stalker, Darren McGavin, uh, directed by John Llewell and Moxie. Um, Quentin Tarantino, I think, calls this one of his favorite uh, TV movies and maybe one of his favorite horror movies. Like, it's just a great vampire movie. And this is a really nice addition. It has a film commentary uh, with Tim Lucas, interview with John Llewellyn Moxie and the composer, uh, Dan Curtis interview, and a really nice slipcase, as you can see. Um, but just a great Darren, Gavin perf Darren McGavin performance. He plays, uh, of course the um the the Carl Kolchak character and it would spin off into its own TV show after the Night Strangler the second uh in this series which is not part of the sale I don't think but definitely pick up the Night Stalker really great stuff and another Tarantino favorite you can listen to him talk about this one and Night Stalker in the Pure Cinema podcast episode we did with him called QT Movie Club and he loves this movie this is a really bleak um, you know, women stranded in the South, their car breaks down in a small Southern town and they end up, uh, angering the local sheriff played by the great Chuck Connors. Um, and things go really, really dark. This is one of the bleakest television movies I've ever seen. And this includes both the 93 minute TV cut and the 101 minute R rated theatrical cut, uh, which was apparently a big hit overseas in some countries. Um, but definitely worth picking up a really nice disc. Uh, Raw Courage, this is um, a very underseen movie that's kind of like Deliverance in the Desert. Um, it's starring Ronnie Cox, Art Hindle from The Brood, and Emm Emmett Walsh. And it's co-written by Ronnie Cox and his wife. 
And basically it's about these guys who are doing long distance running and they do their last uh, training run in the desert and they run into this group of um, militiamen who are doing sort of their maneuvers and what starts as sort of a, um, you know, we don't like each other turns into something much more serious and becomes a chase movie and it's really solid. And this has an on-camera interview with Ronnie Cox uh, from Scorpion. This one hadn't been on uh, disc at all until this came out a few years back. So highly recommended. Uh, Run Silent, Run Deep. This is from 1958, directed by um, uh, Robert Wise. And it's one of my favorite sub movies with uh, uh, Clark Gable and Burt Lancaster kind of squaring off. You've got the young and old guard. Uh, and despite it being shot clearly in a tank, I still think this is the predecessor to, you know, some of Hunt for Red October, some of Crimson Tide. It's just a really solid uh, sub movie. I love naval, you know, battle kind of stuff. The the planning and the strategy that goes into it, really solid. Running Scared, one of the great um, TV, I'm sorry, uh, buddy cop movies of all time with, of course, Gregory Hines and Billy Crystal. Uh, this has a commentary with director Peter Hyams. Good stuff. I'm just trying to pick this up here at the end. The Silent Partner, um, one of the great Elliot Gould movies, the underseen Elliot Gould movies. This is directed by Daryl Duke, who also did a movie I love called Payday, about a country western singer. But this is a really dark uh, thriller about a bank teller who anticipates a bank robbery and sort of lifts some of the money himself before the robber comes, the robber is played by uh, Christopher Plummer, and he uh, is dressed as Santa Claus, so that's sort of that iconography on the front. And Plummer finds out that the bank teller has ripped him off, and then he becomes obsessed with stalking him. And it becomes a cat and mouse thing, and again, dark stuff, but really great. This plays as a double bill with Die Hard at Christmas at the New Beverly, and I do recommend that double bill, but this is really strong, and it has some nice features as well including an interview with Gould. Um, space Camp, cheesy 80s fun. If you're into this stuff, a bunch of kids go to Space Camp and end up launched into space. Has a great cast, including a young Joaquin Phoenix when he was known as Leaf. Uh, Kate Capshaw, Leah Thompson, Kelly Preston, Larry B. Scott, uh, and Tate Donovan, as well as Tom Skerritt. Uh, shot by William A. Fraker, uh, who, of course, directed uh, Monty Walsh. Um, and there's an interview with Leah Thompson and the director. More cheesy fun. This one from Scorpion, Teen Witch uh, from 1989. This has an audio commentary with stars Robin Lively, Joshua Miller, Dan Gauthier, and Mandy Ingber. An on-camera interview with them and an on-camera interview with the Weir Brothers. Um, but this is cheesy fun. Again, another one that you know you like or you don't. Top that and buy this Blu-ray. Another all-time sort of favorite for me is They Might Be Giants, starring George C. Scott and Joanne Woodward, directed by uh, Anthony Harvey. Uh, and this is the story of a man who is crazy, thinks he's um, Sherlock Holmes, played by George C. Scott. He's sort of a rich eccentric. And he is eventually, um, you know, his brother calls in some psychological help and the doctor is actually named Dr. Watson, and she's played by Joanne Woodward, and it's sort of the story of her trying to help him, but also going along on a, an adventure through dirty old New York with him in 1971. So old 42nd Street, and tons of great character actors in this, Jack Guilford of um, most note, but I just love this one. It's just a really ultimately kind of sweet but still has dark moments kind of movie and one of my favorite George C. Scott performances uh, really good stuff there's a commentary with Anthony Harvey um, on this again bleak 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 uh, they shoot hor horses don't they uh, directed by Sidney Pollack who does it they poured it over a commentary I know Paul Thomas Anderson is a huge fan of this one he shot a Michael Penn video that is very much in the style of, or it has some uh, characters f that look like they're from this movie. Basically, the idea is that in, during the Depression, they would do these um, uh, marathon dances um, where they would have people come in and pay a little bit of money and watch these people try and stay awake and dance for days at a time. And they would get like five-minute breaks every 
hour or something like that and it's just torturous so it's like the like really desperate people that are trying to make some money doing it and two of them end up being um, Jane Fonda and Michael Sarazen I mean the cast also has Susanna York, Gig Young, Bonnie Bedelia, Red Buttons and it's just sort of these people banding together and trying to stay awake and keep going and it's it's pretty rough it's a rough movie but it's it's really solid uh, there's also a commentary from Jane Fonda, producer Erwin Winkler, producer Martin Balms, a making of featurette. Um, and, oh, the, there, the commentary also includes Bonnie Bedelia, Sarah Zinn, Red Buttons, and the hairstylist. So it's a big group commentary. But I really like this movie a lot, as dark as it is. Uh, one of the late 60s gems, 1969. And then my last 80s gem, uh, The Wildlife. This one just came out recently. This one also had only had a made-on-demand DVD prior to this. Um, I don't think the soundtrack has been fully restored. There's a couple songs that have been rescored or re-switched um, out. But I don't think it damages the movie too much. Um, and I think it's a great uh, sister film to Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It's also written by Cameron Crowe and has characters that feel like the some characters that would have gone to Ridgemont High but have now graduated, uh, including Eric Stoltz and Chris Penn as two guys that are getting their own place, working jobs. Leah Thompson again here and Alon Mitchell-Smith from uh, Weird Science. Um, really, really enjoyable film. I like it a lot. And then lastly, um, if you're interested in this, the Ida Lupino Filmmaker Collection with uh, The Bigamist, Never Fear, Hitchhiker, and Not Wanted is part of the sale. A really nice set. I got to recommend it. And this is one I haven't even watched yet, but uh, it's like $7.99 during the sale. So if you're into wrestling, uh, Grunt, the wrestling movie from 1985 is also part of the sale. Um, so anyway, that was not as brief as I wanted to be, but nonetheless, a bunch of things for you to check out. I'll leave a link to the sale in the notes below. Um, so have at it. Have a look and see if there's anything you're interested in before the sale ends on July 14th. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.